Alright, welcome to the uh, Shotcast 2 Configuration Builder demo video. In this video we're going to set up a Shotcast 2 server with a one endpoint. <coughs> a really simple uh, uh, Shotcast uh, configuration. And we will start with uh, downloading the tools. And I like to go to the forums to do that. have been slow as of late. We're going to grab the DNAS first. Grab the transcoder next. <coughs> All right, so now that we've got uh, both downloads. Install everything. <coughs> so now we've got our Shotcast tools installed preliminarily. We just gotta configure them. Alright, and we'll do that right now. I'm going to delete all these files that we don't need. Okay, go to Config Builder. Now we've had problems with the transcoder in inherent mode, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that. <coughs> Alright, should I cast 2 mode? Uh, basic mode. Right, everything is just basic. No calendar file, no DJs, just stream. Now I'm going to uh, copy and paste the uh, location to here. Into the tools, standard configuration, port 8000. I'll go ahead and give it a transcoder admin port. I'm going to do a test password and a admin test password for the admin. Alright, here we go. New station name. <coughs> I have an mp3 unlock name and unlock code, but I don't want you to see it. So I'm not going to put it in. I'm just going to use AAC. Alright, we're just going to do one endpoint. Don't need to modify any of this, but you do need to do that, I believe. So I'm just going to do listen dot AAC. 
this value you determine on your own by how much bandwidth you can support. <laughs> don't need to change that, don't need to change that, don't need to change that. That's good to go. Good to go. Same thing with here. You need to research <coughs> how many myth listeners you can support maximum at any one time. So, alright. Now we need to make a playlist file. Alright, so I'm going to use... Just a Winamp playlist to make... Save the list. Oh, I already have one. It's the same one. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it into my folder here. I'm going to edit it with Notepad. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all the superfluous metadata that the Shoutcast server doesn't need. Those are relative paths, not absolute. I can't use this file. Rents. So I'm going to save it as something. Save it to the directory. Let's see if it did it right. Yep, it did. Okay. You don't have to do this, but I am, because I like to. Alright, let me save it. playlist.lst Yes, I'm sure I have to change it. And bingo. Alright, that file's done. I'm going to turn on shuffle. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to the logs directory, which is right here. Oh, what's the path? A little letter for Windows. It's a backslash. Okay. So I got one endpoint. I got my station name. The passwords are set. Okay. So this is just a basic configuration. So I might download the files. Normally you have to tap the path in. But just to see, just so you can see it. So we saved our configuration file for the DNAS, and we'll download the configuration for the transcoder. Let me see if it makes. Yep, there it is. All right, and then we're going to. Save a backup of our configuration. Yep, there it is. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and download the batch files on Windows. Oh, no, they're not here on this, on this simple, on this simple configuration. So we'll have to uh, run these manually. It's a bit surprising. Oh, wait, oh, there we go. He moved them. Okay, that's fine. Download. Start as he served up at. Download. Start as he served up. Oh, see, trans up at. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that the right. It should be. Yep. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna go.
go ahead and create shortcuts to these on my desktop. Alright, so create shortcut here. Create shortcut here. Alright. Now, there's been a lot of complaints on setting up, installing, and setting up uh, shortcuts tools on Windows Vista and 7 because of the UAC. And there's two options you can do here. You can either save your configuration files and your patch files and your launcher files, all that stuff, in your My Documents folder or in a folder you create on the root of your hard drive. How much you can find? Well, this is not Vista. This is Seven, of course. But just to give you an idea of where you would put it, you could just create a new directory for your configuration files. That way, you have to fight with Windows Seven UI, Windows Vista, Windows Seven UI. Um, or you could just turn the UI off and just do a Google search. That's not recommended by Microsoft, of course, to turn the UI off because it's trying to protect you. But one of the surefire ways to you know get rid of get rid of that problem permanently would be to turn off UAC permanently. But uh, and that's your decision to make. You can create a new file or turn off UAC. Um, if it was my machine, I would turn it off. But that's because I just know what I'm doing. So you might want to go ahead and just create your own folder and then put all your configuration files in there um, or inside your My Documents folder, whichever is most easy or convenient for you. Anyways, all right. So, but Ron, I'm, I'm on Windows XP, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, so I'm gonna start this uh, the server, and it has started. I'm gonna start the transcoder, and look at that. It started right away and picked it up. All right, so let's check it out. It's on port 8000. So I'm gonna go ahead and do. One more zero. Index.html. Here we go. All right, stream number one. Yep, it is working. Now you can see where it says server is currently up and public, no YP connection. This current version of the DNAS will not allow anybody to connect to your server until it, it actually is able to register on the YP list, register and list on the YP. So to do that, I do believe you have to go to the admin login for the entire server. So we go in the admin login. The admin name is admin, and that admin password that I set was admin test, I believe. Nope. There we go. All right. So you have to log into your server. You can see all your streams. I've only got one. So we create an auth hash, and as you can see, it fills in a whole bunch of stuff for you. Yeah, country, so I go to United States. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. I'm in California. English. Okay. You would click the create auth hash button. Now I am not port forwarded on port 8000, so I can't do this. But uh, you can if when you port forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server and put it into private mode. That way you can s listen to it and hear it running. All right, so that's the SC trans window. So I just hit Control C to, to stop the transcoder. And you could do the same thing with. Uh, DNAS, but I don't need to do that. I'm just going to change it to private on the uh, configuration builder. That's it. To change it to private, and then I'm just going to re-download the configuration file. All right, and I restart the transcoder. So now I should be private, and it'll let me connect. Okay. Add URL.
Yep. Working. Alright, so this is a successful video. Which is wonderful when things work the first time. Alright. And to demonstrate uh, transcoder blocking client connections on an unregistered or unlisted server that intends to be publicly listed, I'm going to go ahead and show that to you just for sake of completeness. Alright, here we go. See? Doesn't work. Rejected. And this is what it looks like in the air. Stream not available. When it pegs, you see the client user agent, but it says Shotcast 2 client connection rejected. Stream not available. So whenever you see this error, it's because you have your server set to public to list on the IP, but you haven't registered your server yet. So you got to register it before you, before anybody can even listen to your station. Unless, of course, you turn it to private. Well, then, it won't matter. Alright, so that's it for this demo. Just the, the basic, simple Shoutcast configuration demo. Uh, have a nice day.